Now, it's back to school this week and homework will no doubt be at the fore for students, teachers and parents up and down the country. You might have seen a note from a Texas teacher go viral on the internet over the last week or so. Brandy Young was the woman's name. She's an elementary school teacher at Godley Elementary School in Texas and she sent a note home to parents explaining that her class of eight-year-old pupils would no longer be assigned homework. Is this a good idea? To discuss that, I'm joined on the line now by Nisha O'Reilly, founder of Confidence Club. Nisha, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Nisha, tell us first of all, what is Confidence Club? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a project that I started. Um, I originally started the Homework Club, um, which was my own school like, seven years ago. And I suppose what I wanted to do then was to take skills directly into people's homes so that the parents could have more control over their children's education. Um, and so it's become Confidence Club where I support people. sort of, And also it's gone out of Ireland now as well, so it's international. Okay, so what do you think of what uh, Brandy Young has done? I think it's excellent. Um, um, it's... It shows a real shift for me in how this debate has changed over the last five years, I suppose. Um, I did a press release on it five years ago, and I had um, certain motivations for doing that at the time. But I know even from my own teaching team who are involved in uh, mainstream education that when they don't give out homework, what happens is is that they get notes in from a select few parents in the class to ask why there has no be, been no homework set. So I think Mrs. Young has preempted that, and she has also stated what people should be doing in the home and you know, brought the importance of family life together again. When you say a select few parents, are you suggesting that only a minority or a small minority of parents are interested in homework? Only a small minority of parents um, are the ones pushing and believe that doing homework every night actually makes a massive difference to their child's education. And what age would you suggest that homework should begin at? I would suggest really that, that, that homework as such shouldn't be given at any age. Um, I know that there's a debate that the reason we're giving it at primary school level is to prepare for secondary level and so on. But what I see even at secondary school level is that homework is one of the biggest reasons why people hate school. It's one of the biggest um, motivation factors or demotivation factors in students when they don't have homework done and they're then on the back foot and there's excuses and they feel bad and they start mitching school and there's a whole cycle that begins. Um, and for the conscientious students who really care about homework, they're spending a lot of time doing homework to then get it out of the way in order to actually get to study, to study for the exams and to try and learn in the way that they want to learn. Um, one of the biggest debates I have with those students is actually getting them to stop and to do things in a slightly different way so that the way that they're approaching tasks actually does lead to them learning it properly, not just going through the motions and taking the boxes and doing well learning, but also that it allows them to have... Um, more useful sort of skills and actually remember the knowledge as they get closer to exams rather than, than having to redo everything over and over again. Yeah, but uh, the, the thing there, Nishan, I mean, I, I, I think in, in, in philosophical terms, I definitely agree with you in terms of trying to get away from rote learning and that, but the reality is that it's there uh, as the current system stands and if kids are not in the habit of doing homework, when it comes then to studying for the likes of the leaving, it's going to be some shock for them. No, well, you see, you see, that's my de my my debate, and and this is what I do with students. And you know, everybody comes to me, and I suppose what I say to people is that everybody has an educational blueprint, and it's formed not only by their sort of internal experiences, but also by their parents, and also the difficult part for me is by their teachers' experiences, and. When I actually shift things for students and show them how to do things in a different way, they spend far less time studying. It's far more productive. Um, they're not tired. They take it on better. And they don't do rote learning. And then they are set up for third-level education. And they not only scrape into third-level education, they actually have the skills to actually continue and to do well. So, no, I, I would completely disagree with you. That this whole system that we're creating, it's creating very linear people who um, only learn off. And the, um, the reality is the research is there. The people who do very well in their leaving cert, when they go into the third level education, they actually don't do as well. They, they quite often get a 2-2 or a 2-1. Whereas people who do okay in the leaving cert and actually just barely get into their course quite often are the people who get it first. Is there empirical evidence for that? Yes, there is. The, the, there's, that, that's, that's a known fact throughout the, the third level education system. But has there been there's studies a, done to show that? Yes, there have been, yes. And I've, I've been hearing about that since I was in Galway University myself and on a number of courses. Okay, but there's another issue there, and fair enough, I mean, you make your point about rote learning. But even, even in things like, for example, practising writing, 
uh, spelling, all that sort of thing. I mean, surely there's a value in a primary school level, at least, in children um, going through that sort of thing after school. My argument is is that there is other ways to do that. There is evidence that in the home that where people read and there's access to books that that's hugely um, promoting of um, of children in general and in their development. But there's a big assumption at the moment that families don't know how to be families and don't know how to be good parents and don't know how to instill confidence and skills in their children. And we don't make those assumptions in other cultures such as France where you know there's a big emphasis on learning how to cook even from the age of three. There's a big emphasis on play socialization, family dinners, and um, reading together, um, and actually in creative writing rather than in the difficulty I have with quite a lot of writing exercises that are set. Um, they don't really allow people to have an imagination. And I suppose the other part of why I started this debate is because I'm quite often brought in by parents to mediate all of the rows that happen in the home. Um, and quite often parents are actually doing the homework for their children um, where they can't do it themselves. And I think probably the most damaging thing I see at the moment at a primary school level, particularly at really critical ages around seven, is when the work is not able to be done in the classroom and the child can't do it, it's then sent home and they still can't do it so they feel even worse about it. Okay, but you're also talking about a scenario, and I mean there's a lot there's a lot about what you're saying, but it would also require parents to invest far more time in their children than currently is the case, and whereas you could well get some people to do that, particularly if, if they saw the long-term benefits, a huge cohort just wouldn't. Um, I, 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 this debate has been brought up before by, by parent organisations to me. You know, it's, it's not difficult to invest time in your children. And the reality is, is that people are quite often investing hours in homework. And it's a very stressful um, scenario. It's quite often done around the kitchen table. It's being trying to be done when a million other things are being done in the home environment. It's, uh, there's quite often rounds about it. It's really negative it's really stressful there's a big assumption that parents can actually help their children and um, a lot of the people that i work with the parents are not completely different um, and i think that that's the big assumption whereas there's other things going on in the home like dinner has to be cooked and there's there's core things going on that children can be part of and help and even be given um you know very simple tasks that are hugely important like setting the table and actually sitting down to a family meal and that not with somebody with the maths book open in the corner of the table. But do you, do you believe that if the maths book wasn't open in the corner of the table, you'd be more likely to have that level of participation and more family life? I mean, surely homework it doesn't take that much from it that uh, you basically couldn't do both. It, it, it really does seem to take from it. Like, I know that there's set guidelines that it's only supposed to take 20 minutes or it's only supposed to take an hour at six class. But the reality is that that's not what's happening and that there is this stress that has to be got out of the way. So it's, it's not um, promoting um, a, a good attitude to learning in the home. It's a, a burden that has to be got through, got out of the way so everyone else can get on with their reasoning. OK, just to give you a flavour of the type of reaction we're getting, and uh, one year we could stop educating kids and train them to be lazy. Why not? Where will all the political correctness stop? Inevitably, I have to say, when we have any subject like this, that phrase, political correctness, comes up. But also, homework in primary school should be done away with. It causes so much stress, it does nothing for kids. Also, we have uh, Marie and Chum. If my 15-year-old daughter didn't get homework, she wouldn't learn a thing. I think no homework is a daft idea. And yet another, as a former primary school teacher, I 100% agree that other than basics like spellings and tables, homework is more for the parents' benefit than the children's. Um, are you finding at all, Nisha, that you're getting a much positive response from a, a, a wide range of parents? Yes, I do. I, I get far more positive response than I ever get negative response. Um, and I certainly see the, the results within the students. And I might also add that I certainly wasn't forced to do homework myself. I did very well in leaving cert. I got a first in college and a doctorate. And I am very severely dyslexic. So I can't have done everything wrong. Well, not, 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 I don't think anybody's suggesting that. But again, you see, uh, if you don't mind me saying, you certainly strike me as somebody who has who's exceptional in this area and somebody who has very developed ideas, but that wouldn't necessarily translate. 
across society and, and that would seem to be the kernel of it that, that whereas as I say some people would definitely take up the type of opportunities you're talking about I just wonder and I'd say this is the fear among a lot of people whether others would just not bother replacing one form of um, exercise after school with another and uh, the child ends up worse off ultimately. Well, I suppose that my, my debate is that I work with a wide variety of people. Um, a lot of them have been written off by other people. They have a lot of very um, difficult learning challenges and they all tend to do very well. I will sort of finish up on one example for you, for instance, like maths, for instance. So maths is an exceptionally practical subject. It's not a subject that you can be shown how to do. It's a subject that you have to try, it's like building Lego. And my difficulty with the way that it's quite often taught in school is that we're quite often sitting in a classroom and we're shown how to do maths problems. And then we go home and we try to do them ourselves. And if we can't do them, then we feel that we can't do maths. And we go in the following day and we feel that, you know, that we haven't been able to do any of the homework or we've got it all wrong and that really stops our confidence. Also, all that homework that you set has to be corrected in the classroom because if it's not corrected, it's pointless. And that's the big resource strain on teachers in how they actually manage their class time. Whereas if you teach math in a different way in the classroom where you show one or two examples and then the students get stuck into doing it and learning how to do it in a practical way, that's a very good use of the class time. The student will understand math, will understand the concept, and they won't have gone home and stared at the math book and felt that they can't do math for life. Okay, interesting. Definitely, Nisha O'Reilly. And as I say, a number of our listeners certainly agree with you and a number of others don't. But very interesting aspect to it. Uh, homework or no homework, Nisha O'Reilly, founder of the Confidence Club, thank you very much for joining us on the programme.